Hello, welcome to the Nook and Bear podcast. I am Nook. And I am the bear, also known as Kang. Mm, he is. He is. Wow. He. So how are you doing this very fine day, Kang? Well, I woke up pretty late. Um, I didn't even stay up that much. I think I was just tired. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm doing all right. Handled some things, got some issues resolved, and payments done. So I'm good, man. How are you, Mr. Nook? I'm doing pretty good. I got done with the uh, archery class, and like I said, I'm kind of a little tired, but I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Mm. I, I got my... Uh, my, uh, I got my head sculpts for Spider-Man in today, and I was trying them out too, and then I'm going to paint them up. Nice. Yeah, uh, for, for the listeners, I, I guess be the first one to talk about it. Um, I've been painting on, uh, I've been doing some painting on some figures lately, and my most current, my, my most current project was, uh, I was repainting a Spawn figure. That McFarlane did. Unfortunately, even at unfortunately, I put down the uh, the clear coat, which is like a kind of like a coating that will help your figures like keep their paints intact. After putting that on, the way that the McFarlanes are kind of made mm-hmm. is that they're done in sections. So, and if you don't have like a heat gun or like a blow like a blow dryer, what you normally do is you put them in some water that's that's like hot and then you, you, it'll, it'll loosen up the plastic well unfortunately when i did that some some of the paint came off so like the face Damn. the lower toe or so and then like half of half of his legs got fucked up so like i'm gonna have to go back and paint <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i mean i feel the it's like because cause trust me, it's like, you know, folks, I just want to point point out, like, despite how Nook's talking, he's definitely good at his craft. Or, like, you know, definitely good from what I've seen and everything. And, you know, well, I'm, you. you know, trying to get, like, his um, advice on, like, you know, certain custom figures. Because, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that I got this miracle figure because, you know, that's my wife. That's my wife right there. The only anime character I could truly say, oh, yeah, that's waifu. But um, mm-hmm. getting the figure the actual figure i'm just like no offense to a lot of my pale audiences out there but um she's a little too white for my liking a little too pale yeah. at least compared to how she's usually like drawn and everything so i'm just like kind of kind of want to add a little bit of my own paint to that you know when the time comes yeah what they probably did was cast it in white you know that way she matches her hair and her costume they're mm-hmm. all white they probably did that and then like whenever they were like doing the main paints and whatnot then they probably added the other colors so it's probably why that one's a lot lighter yeah true it's like again don't mind i just you know that's that's well, that's neither here nor there <laughs> or if you want to go if you want to go with the with the conspiracy mm, the whole tip is on exactly erasure as they say mm. So shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but nah, yeah, so like, you know, yeah, Nook is very much a master at his craft, or at least mastering his craft. He's pretty good yeah. so far. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying, so like problem is I'm low I'm low on like white. That's mm-hmm. kinda like the main issue and the I mostly need black, but there's some reds and uh silvers I need to go back on, so that's just Nah, I'll get to it. But then I got that Spider-Man head in the mail, so I'm gonna be able to paint on that. So at least I'll have some 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 else stuff to do. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so have you? What have you been up to since last we talked? Okay. Uh, I kind of just been laying low for a bit till I like go. Um, yeah. Uh, cause like um, after. The last video I dropped, you know, talking about a black woman and dark skin anime girls and like Mm -hmm. anime and all that stuff. I was very shocked at how like how that like popped off and everything. I was kind of just like, you know, 
I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself, since that got a lot of views, I know for a fact that, all right, where do I go from here? And it's like, how do I like, you know, maybe not exceed that video, but like maybe just find something where it's like, you know, what do my audience really want? Because if that popped off and the Trudy video popped off and that Cole Williams video from like almost two years ago finally popped off and is getting some traction now, I'm thinking to myself, what does my audience want me to talk about now? So I'm just sounds gonna like stop they, with that. Sounds like they want BBQ. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a mm -hmm. good suggestion, my man. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely wanna like try to like incorporate more of that in time while also talking about the other things I want to discuss because like lately I've noticed that, you know, I've been doing like a lot, and I mean like a lot of like more anime inspired videos as opposed to my usual like, you know, or my original like cartoon content and i'm just like hmm, i go and do more of that while also bringing back the cartoon stuff or western animation every now and again when i can because there's a lot to talk about man so other than that i've just been laid low trying to like see maybe there's another editing tool i could use because like for more you've been good to me but i gotta try other things well you know also, I've just been enjoying making, like, little smaller videos for, like, Twitter, like those um, AMVs and, you know, my uh, season two of, uh, yes, I'm the only person who could say this, niggas season 10, <laughs> as inspired by uh, Yon Deezy's, like, anime openings and everything. So, you know, this a little something I've been doing on the low, just making little AMVs here and there and just edits. <sighs> this is a good time. Nice, nice. Uh, let's see, what have I been doing? Uh, what have you been working? Look. Working, trying to save up money whenever I can. Mm -hmm. That's, time doesn't go over so well, not gonna lie to you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah <laughs> uh, let's see, I, I finished the nanny. It was pretty good. Hey. Yeah, now I've moved on to... Uh, let's see, yeah, I, I moved on to Big City Green, so I've been enjoying that. Nice. Maybe you told me about that. <laughs> damn. And, and within like two, two to three episodes, like, damn. Why? Why is Tilly got to be best girl? And why do I want to? Why do I want to adopt this child? I know, right? Ain't she precious? She is. I'm like, damn, girl. Why? 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 Why, why, why do you gotta be so pure and so wholesome and so lovely? It's still chaotic. You love to see it. <laughs> she's. She's kind of like a. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think how to describe her. Um, she, she, yeah, she's definitely got that nice little uh, co co common demeanor. That calm demeanor, but like could be crazy, crazy in an instant, you know. And it, it, but the thing is, with her aura, it, it, would, it would just seem natural. It's like, oh, okay, she does that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was trying. I was trying to think who else I could compare her to, but. The only person I could think about was would be Boss Burger, so I'm like, no, that that's not quite accurate. It's, it's like, no, nah, I know what you mean. It's like, um, she's pretty much just like, you know, that very, pretty much that very innocent, kind of quiet, but also like, you know, rated, ready, ready to be down with whatever <laughs> no. type of child. She's also got that chill energy, which I, which I enjoy. Mm. I, I like I like to, I like to chill. Oh yeah, I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. That's why I said I'll I'll bring over Tilly and her her and Moon Girl can have a play day. Oh yeah, right <laughs> now, just chilling all that stuff. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man, well, that's cool. Yeah, uh, I really enjoying the show though. It's got a chowder esque, almost kind of regular show feeling you know oh yeah it's like these people from the farm and everything just coming into like the big old city and it's like you know it's it's just really fun it's like it's pretty just simple nothing to like over the top and when they do go over the top they're kind of just like oh well, you know like you said it's kind of just got that regular show vibe it's like it's gonna go back to what it was beforehand it's just it's just crazy man <laughs> yeah and which is fine. There's a lot of good shows that 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 don't need to go too crazy into like story beats. They can just kind of 
do their own little fun adventures and then go back to status quo. Oh, Sometimes yeah. that's a really good thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Even like um, when shows like do have like quote unquote story moments, they usually just go back to the status quo, like um, in Craig of the Creek, where it's like, oh man, here's this overarching story about like, you know, this kid, about like, you know, this king. You know, King Xavier is about to like take over the creek and stuff, and then they just make like a three-parter and just cap it off like that. It's just boom, back to just everyday episodic adventures. And I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> is that on its last season? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, these last batch of episodes is gonna be like the last season plus a movie. So you know, it's going out with a bang. Yeah, at least it's getting a movie, which is cool. Oh uh, yeah, at least I can say that's getting a movie. I like the other shows. Mm. Yeah, like OKKO. Okay, OKKO, okay, the Billy and Mandy movie we were supposed to have. Yeah. Uh, still hurts, but it is what it is, I guess. Man. Oh, yeah. But, um, what else have you been doing, Nook? Uh, not a whole lot. Been painting, been trying to take up mm, scent, story beats, and whatnot, and. Mostly playing Fortnite, and I finally got my copy of Elden Ring back, so I've been playing the hell out of that. Nice. Yeah. But that's what I've mostly been doing, and looking on eBay, trying to scalp up, trying to, trying to do scrims and f figs, you know, for painting. Oh, I gotcha. No. I got, I got me a Doom, Doom Slayer, so I'm gonna paint that up. Say what? Nice. Yeah. I also got me an Omega Red. That way I can just have an Omega Red. I like that. That's cool. Ah, uh, yeah. let's see. Pretty much. What about doing, you? I'm pretty much just doing the same thing. Like, you know, I've been pretty much just like trying to hold my craft a little bit editing wise. I've been trying to get back into drawing, but I can never find my sketch pad. So I've just been drawing on blind paper like, a, like I'm a kid in elementary again. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. but um, I know that feel. right and um pretty much like you said gaming too i've also just been playing a lot of games where it's just customizable characters because it's like well since i'm not the best at like references i might as well just draw might as well just like you know create them and then send it to like any artist and be like yeah this is how they're supposed to look <laughs> just like yeah. just have some type of accuracy and um i've also just uh been reading a lot once i got done with like fits of the north star you know finally got nice. volume two of wrong earth and oh my god how far into that are you uh i'm almost at the end but like so far i'm really loving this i really like um how like it's like all right we had like classic fire it's like we have classic dragonfly man and then we got edgy dragon dragon man dragonfly man and then it's like yo now we got Dragonfly Beyond, and I'm just like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's like, dog, it just keeps getting better and everything else. I also liked how in the beginning, when like, you know, these guys, they weren't, they didn't even know how it's like, there's some time passed, and it's like, you know, now they got Lady Dragonfly Man, or, you know, the former Harley Quinn character they had. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you know, they brought her in. And just when you think like, all right, they're going to like finally go back to each other's worlds and everything because they finally find the mirror back. But it's not that at all. They just end up fucking, they just end up like just straight up getting into a whole other world. It's just like, hey, it's our world, but the future. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. I'm, I just, I'm loving it. I, I love it a lot. I'm so glad you introduced me to this because it's like, I used to read a lot of like, indie comics or independent comics a while back but it's like a lot of them get so lost in the shuffle that it's hard for me to keep up on like what's good like i discovered like when you showed me that it also like found like other similar comics and everything like i found one called them i think it's called power bomb or dropkick something and it's literally just independent it's literally just like a, a comic book based on like pro wrestling and everything because you know nice. that's my bag and is just um it was just like kind of a a really weird shonen inspired indie comic about like a girl wanting to be like a great wrestler but instead of it being like you know just like oh man she's like super determined and all that stuff no she kind of goes through the weird trials and tribulations of being a pro wrestler where it's just like it's gonna hurt 
it's gonna be a lot of bullshit and it does not pay as much so it's literally just her kind of just like ignoring all that to achieve her dream just to be at the top and i'm like damn this hits that, that actually sounds familiar so that's the one with the the girl's got blonde hair and she's got like a starry-esque uh, costume and whatnot that i think that's mostly from i think that might think i think you might be thinking about um what's it called like uh i think it's called common america or whatever that one is because that maybe maybe is that maybe is that one that you're describing but this one's like a little something different i gotta remember like the title properly but basically yeah it's kind of it's kind of like the rest it's kind of like that movie the wrestler but like for like you know a girl at a young age trying to like be a wrestler herself and everything it's crazy it's violent there's this experienced master wrestler who doesn't say anything and he looks edgy as shit he's kind of like king from tekken but like you know he just oh. he's just beaten and uh, bruised half the time <laughs> I, i'm looking at it right now it's called do a powerbomb yes do a powerbomb yeah that's the one yeah it's got, it's got seven issues oh oh Ooh. yeah it's that finally getting, really interesting oh yeah it's pretty much getting uh finally getting like collected you know together and everything as a volume so that's what i'm gonna like pick it up pick it up because Listen, I love my comics. I support them however I can, but I'm not the biggest fan of like collecting issue after issue, and that's my mm. biggest problem. No, I understand. I, yeah, that is totally different than I thought it was. So I, I think the Common Rider America thing—it's the same artist, but I know it's called a different comic. The one I'm thinking of. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you like that. That. Oh yeah, please tell me what that one is. That looks that sounds interesting from how you described it. Well, I I think it's also one of those. Uh, oh, like Icky Talisman styles of uh, American comics, you know? Oh, it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> spicy. Yeah, that's the proper term. Mm. Spice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nah, I get what you mean. <laughs> Man. But yeah, do a power bomb is my shit. Wrong yeah. Earth is my shit, and nice. just pretty much went back down my my pretty much like um, middle school to high school rabbit hole of finding a lot of like independent comics because that's pretty much how I discovered stuff like Johnny the Homicide Maniac and the older Mass comics. So those are really good. Nice. Uh, I I read I read through. I don't know if you saw that before, but I've read through like. Johnny and I read through Squee mm-hmm. and I read through Filler Bunny and Filler Bunny was just like hey he had like a f- four pages to go so he just kind of shout out some uh, some f- filler comics and that's what it was called Filler Bunny but they like put into like a collection damn uh, and then he did another one called I'll Feel S- I Feel Sick which I only got the first two issues of that but beside the point like uh I, I read it and I was like, I, I read Johnny and mm-hmm. it wasn't bad. I just didn't really, I didn't quite understand the appeal. But I mean, then I read Squee and Squee is actually, I, I find Squee kind of, a, kind of a lot better. Oh yeah. Mostly because I found it a little bit funnier. It actually had some humor in it. Oh yeah. No, like. Well, Johnny is definitely more of a nihilist style. It definitely is. It's also kind of like the. Um, artist Jonah Vasquez kind of like venting about like you know him and the, and the things he has to like deal with being an artist where it'd be like people giving like unfaithful criticism or like pretty much just saying like oh man you gotta do this because you're an artist you gotta do this for me because you're an artist and blase blase so I was like trust me I can understand where it's not for everybody and even me reading it now I'm just like man I was a top tier angsty kid for getting into stuff like this but nah Trust me, I can understand it's not being for everybody. And also, as far as, like, I feel sick, you said you only got two issues, right? Yeah. Okay, then you got the entire series right there, then. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. yeah maybe I just had one issue. I don't, I don't remember. Oh, uh, yeah, I literally I only had, like, I... two issues, and that was it. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. I think I might have found that comic while we were talking as well. It was, uh... It's called Empowered. Oh, that one. That I yeah. have. I've had that one. 
once high school. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that about? Like it is wow. I mean, I'm looking at it again. Like wow, that is very icky Towson with all the ripped clothing. Right now. Oh man, I guess pretty much when I first bought them in power, I kind of knew the context going in because it's like listen to the people listening to this. If you see a copy of like empowered and you see that it's wrapped up in plastic yeah there's a reason why it is very <laughs> spicy bro i read that shit and it's literally just girl has like blonde girl has like a super powered symbiote and it gives her all types of strength and vulnerability and all that stuff the costume gets ripped slightly in any way shape or form she's a damsel in distress <laughs> and that's just how it goes it's literally just like she just gets caught up in bondage and scenarios and it, you think it would get kind of tiring or boring after that but it's surprisingly like fun spicy but also got a lot of heart to it it's so weird <laughs> uh, okay okay so yeah trust me it's definitely the point of that it being very <laughs> spicy but it's got heart <laughs> okay okay because i remember i remember what i back back when i used to work at comic book stores that's when they all, always see that advertisement. I'm like, what is going on there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Empowered was... Uh, it, it was definitely of the times, but it was... <laughs> it's a good kind of of the times. It's, it's very hard. Yeah. It's very heartfelt. Just very spicy going in. Not going to lie to you. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. But it's it's good. I, I'll, I'll say this. It, it, is a, it is a good, fun, like, superhero parody story. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Spe speaking of like indie, like I I've read, I read a little bit, but I didn't read too much of it. Uh, there is this, uh, there is this web comic online. It was called Spinner. Right? Do you, do you, have you ever heard about that? That sounds familiar. Ba basically, this girl she get she gets like six six arms and spider powers. She decides to call herself Spinneret. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, like, there was already a character in that universe called Spinneret, so they. I have like a fight or whatnot, mm -hmm. and then she ends up she ends up winning. She ends up outsmarting the other person, and then she takes over the uh she she takes the name. <laughs> I, I didn't read too far. It was kind of one of the it, it was indie. I think it kind of might have been like mature. I don't know if adults the quite the word, but I read the first. I read the like I read like the first few panels because you know it's web comics so you know you're reading like four panel grids you know mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad and the costume wasn't bad either oh i think okay i'm looking at this now yeah i remember seeing this in passing she she looks cool i just at the time i just did not know where to really read her stuff or anything like that is all these there's some weird indie comics where it's just like a yo cute girl gets superpowers shenanigans that's how it goes <laughs> yeah and, and the f funny thing in that one is there's a character that was called like uh i think that's that's the superhero that's like uh that that's the milf like like that that's her superhero name because uh she she lost her contract with her with her last name with her last superhero persona whoa so she decided to just go by the milf or something like that damn <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> like I never, I never finished it. So, uh, yeah. you, you, oh, her name is Super Milf. Yeah, Super Milf. There it is. And oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it is definitely. It is another spicy, definitely another spicy yeah. comic. But it looks fun though. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm looking over. Now I'm kind of looking over images of it myself. Yeah, she's kind of has like a. The first version of, uh, or like one of the versions of Spider Woman. She's got the black and white going. Right. Like the one she was, like the one she was wearing in uh, Secret War. Oh uh, yeah, like that was the one with the redhead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in redhead or blonde hair, one of those. But like, yeah, nah, I see what you mean. Yeah, she's very uh, reminds me a lot of like Spider Woman, what but with six arms. Damn. Uh, like I said, guys, I've never really fully read it, so be forewarned. I, I have no idea what's about. <laughs> I, I, don't, 
I don't even know where you could read this now, but yeah, yo, precaution. Yeah. 14 and up at least. Yeah. Man. But yeah. Nah, and the concert are kind of just like weird. Because it's like you kind of just came across like it. Eh. Because I was still going through my edgy phase, I just remember like reading a lot of like horror based comics or not really horror based, but more like slasher comics, kind of like um, uh, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, and then a little bit of Marvel Zombies and well, Ash vs. Marvel Zombies. And then there was, um, I don't know if you remember, ever heard of this one, it's called um, Hack and Slash. Yeah, yeah, I have. It's about that. It's about a girl who's trying to hunt down a serial killer, right? Oh, and yeah. she and her sidekicks like a Jason Voorhees kind of stand in. Oh uh, yeah, li- yeah, literally just a big kind of deformed homie who's just got like a heart of gold. And that's just it was pretty good. From what I remember it, yeah. it was like a, apparently she was supposed to make a movie appearance in the hypothetical uh Jason Jason versus Freddy versus Ash movie, but that didn't happen, so you know. Mm. Right. That sucks. I know, right? Man. So that was my shit for a while. I don't know. Nice. It was just a golf girl with bat that kills serial killers. <laughs> I'm a t- I'm a young I'm a young teenager. Of course this appeals to me. <laughs> weird, weird. We've all been there. It's mm-hmm. alright. <laughs> some weird. of us kinda of, some of us kinda of stay there, but we're not talking about that. Yeah, I totally didn't get that effect when I saw the jury trailer from Street Fighter Six. No, sir, not me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I know what fact you did get, though. <laughs> <laughs> Put those grippers away. Honestly, like, dog, I'm trying to play the game. <laughs> Why are they in my face? <laughs> it's like, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, dog, so it's like, See, so like literally those types of comics always kind of just like they just kind of hit for me at that young age because it's like I was wasn't really into anime like I used to be at the time. Superheroes just weren't really doing it for me unless your name was Batman or Deadpool or Deathstroke. So mm-hmm. yeah, pretty much edge edginess, edgy comics was the way. <laughs> nah, I feel you. I feel you. Um. Speaking of edgy comics, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Yeah. But it's been a while, so I might not remember what it was called. But basically, Raphael was like in another comic book where that was a team up comic, and it was mm-hmm. like ultra violent. They had, and like the other characters were like humans and they had like guns and whatnot. Whoa. Yeah, it was just kind of like, what's, uh, what's going on here? I, I forget what's. I'm gonna try to see if I can find out crossover, but it was called something else, and it's just like, "Well, that is totally just Raphael," <sighs> and it and it was. So it's like, "What? What's going on here?" That sounds familiar. Hmm. It's like it feels like a crossover comic. Yeah, or or like their own little kind of like indie thing that they were trying to start. I forgot what it was. One of my friends, he had an issue of it, and I was like, "This is this is strange, but okay." I think. And I don't remember if he was if he was wearing if he was if uh, you know he pulled out the gat and you know started killing people. <laughs> Damn. I'm trying to see if I at least remember something similar to it. Yeah, it was like damage something or something like that. Damn, because like the most that I could think of was um this one old um TMNT comic called um Raphael Bad Moon Rising. Hmm, what's that about? I I can't remember. I don't think I could even find the issue anywhere. All I remember it was just Raphael and he was hanging out with like um these three girls and everything protecting them and all that stuff, and they were just like. They're just like his homies, and he treated them like family because they reminded him of his brothers. It was just, it was kind of just him just on his own doing his own adventures. I, I can't, I wish I just knew more about it because I literally only saw it in passing in like the illustrations of it. I don't know what Raphael was doing. 
<laughs> I feel ya. I, I hate it when that happens. You're, where you're like a kid, and you're just like, I barely see these things, and then I never, I never see them again. It's like, yeah, this is the image right here. <laughs> just Raphael with Whoa. three girls. One of them is just a mystical girl. And that's that's. I it. mean, that's all I, I know. I mean, that that actually looks kind of cool. I kind of right? see. I do want to know what that's about. Right. <laughs> it's been a mystery since since I was like thirteen. I don't know what this is. Whenever you edit that, put that up on screen. Maybe somebody can figure that out. Honestly, I will. Cause wow, <laughs> so, bro, what's this comic? Where was this? Yeah, I'm also looking up on I'm looking up online while as we talk. Be like, what the hell was it? Right. Oh. It's, yeah, I know. This this is weird. That's all I can say. It was weird. Mm -hmm. Man. But yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll ask my friends, but I'll ask my one friend about it later because I think he still has that issue. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like a. I think it was like a 90s crossover. I it was a 90s TMNT. Yeah, this... And it was like, because, you know, of course, it was the edgy 90s mm. style. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where, you know, we were like, hey, what, what if uh, what if somebody lost... What, what if uh, Donatello lost an eye? And what, what if Raphael had, had a baseball cap? Yeah, what if all the turtles died? Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of just how it was it's like almost everything it's like once the like early to like mid 90s kicked in it's like guys we gotta go dark and edgy and grim all right batman's making money nobody cares about superman it, it's it's about that time guys so if we just killed off all the turtles <laughs> yeah <laughs> i remember i remember at one point they had uh Ninja Turtles. They had a, they had they had a robot suits and and like the toys you could like shoot their fists off. Whoa. Yeah, I think I had one. It was it was kind of cool, but also as a kid I was like, what what's this? This isn't this isn't uh, him him fighting the foot or anything like that. <laughs> this isn't him fighting the Foot Clan. What the hell? Uh, oh yeah, speak, speak, speaking of turtles, uh, we're, we're kind of uh, we're kind of spoiling who's going to be our next guest. So this is a hint, a hint, hint on who our next guest will be. Oh yeah, Ins oh yeah, insert turtle talk here, and insert exactly. <laughs> insert hint, one piece hint, of turtle. <laughs> insert per insert one piece of turtle talk here for the future. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, we we should we. We we could talk more about it later, possibly, because we'll maybe we'll have found it, <laughs> oh, yeah. found what we're looking for on our perspective, and be like, <laughs> literally after this podcast, it's like, oh hey, this is what it is. <laughs> we found it, goddamn it! Just oh, just flip over. <laughs> Honestly, uh, now, I'm just, now I'm just looking through. Like now I'm just looking through. I, like I typed in. Uh, Raphael crossover nineties. Not just getting a bunch of stuff. I'm like, man, there, there's some cool stuff here. <laughs> right. And then it's like, oh, I used to have that stuff. That stuff, turtle. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting reminded of my childhood. My damn. Whoa. Yeah. They can. Hmm. But so you were almost done with. Uh, wrong earth. That's good. That's oh, good. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah. Literally just a few more pages. And it's like, well, time to get volume three whenever that comes through. Hmm. God. But yeah, and, uh, and, uh, oh, yeah. Since pretty much, like, also on that topic of, like, comics and crossovers, man, why did Spawn literally cross over with everybody? Yeah, he did. Like, it was like one thing he crossed over with, like, you know, characters of that comic book company. But then it's like, oh, uh, yeah, he also crossed over with Batman, the Ninja Turtles, the Max, a bunch of other, like, comic book characters that, like, don't even fit the vibe of Spawn. Apparently, he crossed over with Harry Potter. And I'm like, bruh. Don't, don't forget Sonny the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, that also happened. 
Uh, the sad part is, like, they didn't really interact. He was just kind of in the alley. He's like, oh, look at those guys over there. Bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro, go talk to them. I, wa I want to see interactions, not, I'm going to serve those guys. It's like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, he just has, like, all these, like, weird crossovers with, like, a bunch of characters. And I'm like, damn. The 90s was spoiled. I want to see half of these things. Mm -hmm. God. So I'm just like, you know, I really wanted to... And I know he also crossed over with, like, you know, the uh, Mr. Invincible Mark and everything. And just... I'm like, damn. Where was I when all this happened? Yeah, they did. They, they kind of... I really wish they would have done like a. They they kind of mentioned it. Sorry, I should probably finish my thought. Uh, they sh they kind of mentioned it, but I really wish we would have gotten Avengers style Image Comics like crossover. That you know that that's kind of the thing. We kind of did a few times, but yeah, because like Image is just all over the place now they don't even have their own like you know connected universe anymore of original heroes it's now it's just like you know it's just all indie comics now which again i get it. i respect that and all that stuff it's just like mm -hmm. you can have both it's like when marvel publishes like comics and books and it's just like you know they're not connected to the superhero verse and it's just that's just what they do so yeah that's why i'm just like because they had like um because I remember, I know that one infamous, like, um, Invincible panel where it's just like, you know, uh, everybody showed up to these superheroes funerals and then there's Savage Dragon, a couple other mm -hmm. Image Comics characters, and it's just like, damn, what happened to them, like, in the later chapters? <laughs> yeah. It was like, that was just their whole thing. They just had, like, weird crossovers with each other, but they pretty much just didn't make it consistent is what I'm saying. So it was like, that's just yeah. what it was. I, I think I remember one of the marks from the alternate universe stated that he killed his version of Spawn in his world. Damn. So that might have been like the closest thing we got. It's, it's crazy that it's crazy that Invincible was able to like kind of semi cross over with a bunch of other people too. Yeah. At least they like tried he, to. Yeah, like, he totally did a crossover with, like, Spider-Man, like, and then he went to this universe where he, it's totally heavily implied that he's talking to Batman, because it's kind of from the waist down, mm -hmm. but it was just, like, one panel, he's just like, wait, you're, you're, you're a man who just dresses like a bat, and you call yourself Batman? <laughs> and, and he did the same thing to Spider-Man, too, he was like, wait, you're, you're, you're a man, and you dress yourself up like a spider, and you call yourself Spider-Man? So lame. So corny. <laughs> yeah, it's so corny. Yeah, that's what he says. So corny. <laughs> Bro, and I know he pretty much did the same thing with all the other like Avengers and everything. <laughs> Just calling them out yeah. like it is. It's like, damn y'all are y'all kind of lame, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh yeah, it was this image right here, or one of the many images where it's just like you got Spawn, Savage Dragon, and uh, the wa the Wildcats in the back. Or in forward, there's fucking Wishblade right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, like, before the anime, Wishblade was also, like, a original comic over here in America. <laughs> and there's, uh, there's. Let's see. Also, I'm trying to think. I know who this one is. The That's the Mark Sylvester comic, the Cyberforce. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Cyberforce. The, there's Young Blood right there. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I think that one's Nighthawk, if I remember right. Oh, yeah. And then I don't know who the back one is. I think. I don't remember who that is. But yeah, like, I wish they would have. Wish we could have got something like that. Yeah, like I said, it, it happened in, like, passing and. 
one time they had like this big comic book crossover where it's like everybody's here and spawn's gonna kill them all wait what <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just like spawn it was like all of a sudden it's like hey what happened to spawn because like they didn't make any spawn comics for a while and then al simmons comes back and he's just like evil now and now he's super spawn or omega spawn i mean yeah because I, mem- I remember there was the second person who wielded the mantle of Spawn. He was uh, a blonde guy, but I forget because I looked this up like a couple of weeks ago. I forgot what his name was. He was some blonde guy who who took over the mantle of Spawn for a little bit. Oh yeah. Because I forgot what happened to Al Simmons. I think I don't think he died. Maybe he became like a. Like a redeemer or something like that. It's I haven't really ever read Spawn, so I'd hate to give up misinformation. Mm. I think if I remember right, because I did read some of that um, new Spawn's comics and everything. He um when he came around and everything, his whole power was just like you know he just healed people and everything. He was kind of like a whole different Spawn. But like um mm-hmm. when Al, it was always kind of inconsistent because. In one comic you read, you see that he turned into a mega spawn, and then in the other comic you see that he just killed himself and he yeah. died. And that's kind of just what was canon for a while till like they brought him back in Spawn Resurrection. Mm. It was it's so weird. It yeah. was so weird. <laughs> and and uh, and uh, and uh, is that in the, the same uh, umbrella as King Spawn? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. It, it was just, it was just always so weird because, like, Spawn at the time, it was pretty much when he was just going full demon mode. He literally started mm-hmm. like looking like a monster and everything, or like yeah, he, he had like a he had like a venom head going almost. Exactly. With, like, with, with like a mouth and everything. Exactly. So it's like pretty much she was just going full on like you know full on symbiote mode almost, but um. Yeah, that's essentially just what happened to him for a while. And when writers kind of weren't sure they wanted to make him go full villain or just kill him off, they just brought him back. And that's seriously what happened. I don't know what happened after that, though. Mm. Uh, maybe Todd was like, nah, nah, nah. I, I, I'm Image Comics now. He wouldn't do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, nah, nah. We're bringing that motherfucker back. Nah. Like, actually. <laughs> Actually, it's like <laughs> uh, it's like after that, it's like other than that, all I know is that now they just got a bunch of Spawn spinoff comics and everything else like that. Mm-hmm. Just like here's Lady Spawn, here's Omega Spawn, here's a big ass and fucking Avengers Infinity War style of Spawn heroes and villains coming together to face a big threat. And I don't know what's going on with that right now. I just know that was yeah, the last man. thing I read. <laughs> I will say one spawn that does intrigue me, of course, is mm-hmm. the current. They're gonna. Well, it's currently happening. The crossover between him and Batman, the third one. I've I've heard really good things. I want yeah. I want to check it out. Yo, same. Cause like, um, the last crossover I've seen with like Batman, or at least with heroes like that, was um. You remember the Max? Yeah. 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 Apparently, that was. Apparently, that crossover was kind of just the last was both like you know a crossover comic and the last story arc with the max which i did not know was that recent so when i read that i was wow. like wow holy shit <laughs> is isn't that a is it keith david or david keith who does the max uh let's see i think it's because <laughs> i always get him mixed up with the hulk guy oh yeah no his name's sam keith Sam Keith, there we go. Sam Keith, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, it was his, his style. Keith. His style takes a little getting used to, but it's oh, yeah. not bad. Oh yeah, no, trust me, I feel that. I I definitely like it. I definitely like it when he's drawing the Max. But like, here's the thing. I, it's kind of weird. I like how he draws a lot of the guys, or like a lot of the mm-hmm. guy characters. His women. It's kind of a mixed bag because 
Sometimes it'll look nice. Other times it's like he's gonna go very surreal and he'll just go off the rails and do whatever. So it's like it's a 50-50 with the women. The guys, they're usually on point though. Yeah. The only other thing that kind of gets me is how he kind of draws Batman with the kind of ridiculous long ears. Right? <laughs> yeah. Bro, he cannot draw the bat symbol to save his life either. I feel so bad. Yeah. But damn. I, I think I, I... I did read a comic he did where it was like... Batman and Lobo. And that wasn't bad either, because Lo Lobo definitely works as that exaggerated body. Oh, yeah. Style. Oh, yeah, no, that works. Not like it. But I never really took the time to actually read the Max. I know of it, though. Pretty much, for me, I just got a lot of, like, um, my uh, interest in the Max was from the MTV show. Literally just t retelling the entire comic book series. Hmm. And I honestly feel like that's the best way to get into like the max if you can't really get your hands on like a comic or anything because it's it's way easier you get through the story faster the only thing that's and you're not really missing anything the only thing that's going to be like off-putting is the fact you're just going to miss certain like superhero cameos because like i read the comic and i watched the show savage dragon's in the comic he's not in the show yeah so you know other than that you're not really missing much so i just say i recommend cartoon and everything plus it has um i would say compared to like keith's style it definitely mimics mm -hmm. it but it makes it way more appealing too because yeah i'll be real it's not mm -hmm. always the best it's a little sloppy at times yeah. but it's still it's supposed to be a surreal dream like thing so i get what he's going for but eh. yeah it, it, it looks it, it 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 was done really well as an animated series oh yeah. wow Exactly. So, you know. That one, that'd be one I'd wish that like Adult Swim would like take up. You know, like, Honestly. like, because it'd be cool. Or like HBO give it, give it the Spawn treatment. You Ooh, know, right? Yeah, that, that's what it feels like that they were going with the mask. I mean, the Max. They were trying to do like their version of like the Spawn animated series true because like um it was so it was kind of weird because like it was just a lot of like um image comics like shows were just getting picked up in the 90s and they tried yeah. doing it in like the 2000s and everything but it was kind of just like all right who we got we got a um, spawn on hbo the max on the tv the savage dragon is <laughs> uh... <laughs> wait what uh, well cat Wildcats. Yeah, Wildcats too. <laughs> uh, sorry, every, every, every time I every time I think about that theme, it, it goes too hard. No, nah, they, nah, they were I like, agree. Let, let's let's put the budget on the theme and make it go so hard that the series is gonna be like, eh. Uh, just like just like every other show in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh. Damn. I get it. You 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 you're just trying to be a filler for the X Men animated series, but man. Uh, why? Why are you gonna make a badass theme? Right. <laughs> it's like listen. All, it's like listen. Even if the show's not that good, as long as we hook them in with the theme song, they're they're infatuated to watch now. <laughs> yeah. And I remember <laughs> as a kid, I did watch Savage Dragon. I think on the Sci Fi Channel. Okay, so it was on the Sci Fi Channel. I had no I idea where it came on. I think I could be wrong about that, but yeah, I remember watching that as a kid. The Savage Dragon series. Nice. I don't remember much about it though, and me watching the Wildcats, you know, years later, I'm just like, God, why? <laughs> it, it's 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 not that great. I mean, uh, they they tried. Like you can see why they they. I think they only got one season, but I could be wrong. But like, they they tried to like shove some like last minute like Less story minute. beats into the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, oh yeah, these two, they have a thing for each other. I bet you couldn't tell. It's like, no. That that's that that just seems like out of nowhere. Yeah, they have a thing for each other. Like, oh, okay. It's like, wow, I never would have guessed. That's crazy. 
Melod melodrama melodramatics. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> but wow. uh, now, now looking over this King Spawn thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um Huh. I didn't realize how recent it I didn't realize how recent this was. Wow. I thought Cyberforce was I thought Cyberforce was its own thing. Oh no, trust me, that's what I'm saying. It's like literally all this spawn stuff that's happening is as recent as like twenty nineteen and onward. So it's kinda just like all this stuff is just happening like super fast. <laughs> yeah, cousin cause isn't Cyberforce top cow? Yeah, and it's a little complicated at times because here's the thing. Image yeah. top cow. Um Whatever that third company was that used to make like the Evil Dead comics, they're all oh, kind yeah. of, for lack of a better term, fuck buddies. So it's like, yeah. you know, they all kind of just have crossovers and everything with each other's properties and see what's popping and what's not. And sometimes they'll take those properties for themselves because, uh -huh. like, some of us remember Top Cow. At least I'm glad you remember uh -huh. Top Cow. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 were, they were the darkness uh, uh, people. Who made the Darkness comics? Oh, uh, yeah. And, like, um, they also did um, this one comic book character that I kind of regrettably know about. And I think, and sorry, I think also that's where Witchblade may have came from as well. Yes, yes, actually, you're okay. right about that. <laughs> but what, what was the comic you're thinking of? Uh, for me, it was um, yeah. this one character named bomber girl or bomb girl oh that's oh yeah oh i remember that one that 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 one had a that one had a an obama uh cameo right yeah <laughs> yeah i remember that she was a villain exactly uh, I, was, I, was that, I was thinking about that a month ago i was like man what the hell was up with that comic it was it's insane it was like i Oh, her name wasn't Bomber Girl, it was Bomb Queen. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. That's right. Oh, dog. When yeah. I saw her, I was like, ooh, I don't think I should like yeah. this, but I kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I remember this. Uh, it was so weird. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, cheer readers right there. Oh, lordy. Goddamn. So, yeah, she had yeah. a. She, yeah, I remember. Did, I thought she had like a, thought she either like kidnapped Obama or she, uh, she like claimed to have his child or something like that. It was weird. Oh, <laughs> uh. I never read it. I just remember like reading synopsis. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Trust, trust me. The fact that you just know of this character is good enough for me. I was, oof. <laughs> Those hips definitely don't lie, though. Whoa. Right. <laughs> Whoa. It's insane. Ugh. It's it's kind of like they were trying to go for like an evil tank girl almost. Pretty much is just like, yeah. it's like, hey guys, how are we make an appealing supervillain? Make her hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is, the Obama one. Right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's just like knowing all that. And just like reading this stuff, it was like, huh, I guess comics really aren't just for kids. <laughs> that was a learning experience for Baby Kang that day. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> uh, trying to, th um, I, I was, since we're, like, we're, we're definitely probably going to call this an indie comic episode, and I'm oh, okay yeah. with that. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is definitely the indie comic episode. I'm, right. I'm down with that. <laughs> um, uh, one indie comic that was just really freaking weird, and it, it is a little blasphemous, so I do apologize about that. Yeah. Uh, it was called it was called Wormwood. Do you remember what that was? That sounds very really uh, familiar. Uh, basically, what happened was the Antichrist and Jesus decide to instead of listen to their like fathers you know like satan and god they decide to tell them to fuck off and they just go live their lives and the and they're in uh damien like like the antichrist he's also followed around by this this rabbit that talks to him 
mm -hmm. Peter Rabbit, you know? Yeah. And Jesus is actually, he's black in this. Oh, that was, that must have been controversial when it uh, dropped then. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's about to, I'm about to tell you even more controversial thing about it. Yeah. Like, at one point, uh, Jesus is kind of, uh, uh, he's mentally disabled. Say what? <laughs> yeah, because of, uh. Uh, police brutality. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you, you, you're f feel free to, like, double check me on that, because I haven't. I, I barely skimmed it, because it was one of those comics that would come in, like, the black. Yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. Oh my it would come in the. God. Oh, yeah, it was Garth Ennis. That's probably why. Yeah, it's Garth oh, Ennis. Oh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, like it was really fucked up. Oh lordy, Garth. And, and, yeah, and then at one point, Damien's like, uh, the Antichrist is like going out with this chick, and you know they're getting intimate. And Peter Rabbit calls him a, uh, I'll just say a poo stabber. Whoa. Yeah. It was really fucking weird. Don't know if I'd recommend it, but it, I, I don't know. Well, as a fellow Christian man myself, I'm about to buy, I'm about to buy this shit day <laughs> one. It's <This is> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember it. Like, I, I've barely, I skimmed through like some issues, oh. and then kind of, kind of stop, stop caring about it because you know, it's like, eh, Yo. not for me. That's fair. I was like, yo, Garth is out here like, hey, yo, how edgy do you want it? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. He is the boys guy, right? Or is oh, that... yeah. Oh, that's him. Okay. Okay. If I say, is that the other guy? Oh, yeah. You got him. Okay. Yep. <laughs> the boys and that, um, when did he comic that I definitely could not buy <laughs> with my folks watching? Whoa. So, so, uh, you ever heard of the pro? No, that it's sounding familiar though. So, all right, the pro was basically about this like pretty much down on her luck woman who's also like a prostitute, and well. she has a baby and everything. She's pretty much just like whatever about the world like she's on like doomer mode and everything mm -hmm. and then she gains like superpowers and becomes like you know the typical superhero indestructible flies all that stuff and she's mm -hmm. just not into it but she does it reluctantly because it pays well so she just teams up with these other more traditional but heavily parodied like you know superheroes and everything and just mm -hmm. it's it's disgusting. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's disgusting. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That sucks because um, there's almost like a... It's almost like a tinge of a good thing in there. Right? Like, reluctant superhero. Like, that. that's pretty cool, actually. But then you tell me... And I'm looking at it now, and it's like, oh. Oh. Okay. Like, like, shout, like shout out to, like... The artist Amanda Connor for like drawing everything because she definitely makes it more tolerable. But like, damn, it is gross, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. Didn't, didn't she go on to uh, do the uh, do one of the Watchmen comics? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, she did. It um, looks really familiar. Yeah, she did um Silk Spectre's um comics and everything. Yeah, That's she right. Oh uh, yeah, she did the Silk Spectre comics, and she did the, um, you know, you know, I mostly know her for like she pretty much introduced me to Power Girl, so yeah, did a yeah, lot of like I'm, her, all the art for her comics. I am, I, I am kind of looking at it now, like some images, like, yeah, you're right, like her, her art is definitely making this work at least. Right. But I could. I, I could see, like, maybe how it could, uh, totally get fucked up. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
It's like the boys, but it's no, there's no overarching story. It's just all parody. <laughs> yeah. It's like man, but yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty much just what that is. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and it's just like fuck superheroes in general, but proceeds to keep writing about superheroes. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, damn it. This, yeah. is, this is disgusting. It's kind of funny, but it's kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lordy. I, can't, uh, I, I think I, besides Silk Spectre, I think she's done other things, too. Oh, yeah. She does, like, um, I know she does, like, a lot of um, comic... Uh, I know she still does, like, you know, a lot of art for, like, um, Harley Quinn's comics and, like, you know... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Pretty much just, like, she's just doing, like, a lot of stuff for, like, DC and everything. I know she does like um, other. I know she has other works. I just, I just never really seen most of them, or seen a lot of them. Oh, well, she did the Starfire miniseries. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Looking at that art and everything. Yeah, I I'm looking at it now. I'm like, oh, okay. That's why I look kind of familiar. Oh uh, yeah. I I'm not gonna lie. It's. I mean, yeah. I mean, she she does a good job of it. Oh yeah. She's kind of like the. Uh, I'm trying to think who was that artist. Um, her style reminds me of kind of like a female version of. Uh, you you've read Emperor Joker, right? Yes. Joker. I'm trying to think who's the artist uh, on that. One second while I'm researching. Think it's uh, uh let's see. No problem. Let's see, who is the artist? Emperor Joker. Uh, Ed McGinnis. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. He, he, it kind of reminds me of like if I took a female version of Ed McGinnis, like the way how it's also kind of exaggerated, but done differently. I, uh, lo oh, yeah, I love Ed McGinnis' style. Yeah. He, he, he's got a really interesting way of drawing Superman, which is always cool. Right. They yeah. just they look like they all look like freaking I really liked Ed McGuinness's style and like um when he was like doing some of the whole comics and everything. Yeah. I was just like, yo, I want all these heroes in my hand as action figures, like right now. <laughs> oh yeah. It's so, like honestly he really knows how, like honestly he really knows how to draw, but yeah, honestly. Like, man, yeah, I could definitely see, like, the similarities in their styles. Yeah, and that's not, like, I'm saying they're, yeah, you know, like, they're uh, one one over the other or anything. I'm just saying it's kind of interesting whenever you look at a different artist and you still see similarities, you know, oh, yeah, how, no. the way art works. Oh, yeah, trust me. There's always going to be similarities, no matter, like, how different your style is from somebody else's. Because, like, either A, we're inspired by that person, or you inspired them, or sometimes it's just a big old coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, uh, it, the art would look, would have me check out the pro, but I don't, I don't know. All I, all I can say is this. The violence is the least disgusting thing in this comic. That's all you need to know. Wow. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> right. Oh, lordy. Oh. Oh, Garth Ennis. That boy. Right. He loves them violence, huh? Yeah. Did he? I'm trying to think. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah, he also did uh, The Preacher. Damn. Damn, he did all that edgy shit, huh? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Which I never really read or wa but I never really watched it. Did you watch the series? I tried watching it, and it's alright. It's just, eh. It's kind of just like a typical like AMC paranormal show based on a comic book. It's, it's fine. It's alright. Not mm. special. Yeah. Did, like, uh, 
I can kind of say the same thing about the comic from what I've read too. So yeah. Damn. Ugh. I just remember the series had some buzz, and I, I will say, so yeah, yeah, that that that's kind of what happened. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm surprised that the boys have lasted this long. I guess because it's like, unlike most shows, they're like, regar like regardless of how you might feel about like you know the show itself and everything i will give the show this they definitely know how to advertise itself especially off of amazon prime yeah mm. that is true oh uh, yeah because it's like especially with what especially when like this kind of especially when this show decided to drop in the middle of the superhero buzz you know because it's like because mm -hmm. like let's be real that's that's kind of what happened to a lot of these shows now. Cause somebody kind of put this into perspective when I was when we were talking about my hero. I can't remember who, but pretty much we all just sat down and they said, you know, my hero academia would not be as popular as it is now if it weren't for like the superhero buzz. Cause mm -hmm. it's otherwise it would just have been seen as like another shonen anime. And that kind of just makes me realize, damn, maybe One Punch Man did come out too soon. Yeah, kind of like uh, hell. It, it, it's it's hard to say this, but I I think we can both definitely agree the Watchmen movie definitely came out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did. Yeah, like because let's be real. When I, when I was a kid, seeing those trailers, I was like, "Who are these people? What is mm -hmm. this movie?" I've never seen these characters under a DC logo before. What is this? <laughs> so I'm just like, hey, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and let's be real. I don't think anybody was ready for a nihilistic superhero show or superhero yeah. movie with these characters. No. <laughs> Not yet. It probably would have worked better now, but man. <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't want to start a fight, but I mean, I, I, guess, I guess I'll bring it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the series didn't fare much better. Yeah, and it's like I'll say this: I got a soft spot for that series, but it's like, man, all I can say is just like, maybe it's pretty much just like Alan Moore said: this shit cannot be adapted in any other way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's like. Plus, I'll give the series this. At least they mentioned the squid and showed it. Yeah. Zack Snyder couldn't yeah, even do I, that. I, like, <laughs> I, I wish he kind of would have, like, uh, uh, I, I did not like the way that ended in the movie. Right. Because, uh, and uh, I guess we'll talk about that kind of briefly, but mm -hmm. like, the, the reason why I didn't like it, it's because in the comics, it made it where they had to, where the Earth had to, like, kind of come together and fight this alien force. So, you know, that's what it was kind of about. Oh, yeah, no. But then, go ahead. <laughs> and I was just going to say, like, yeah, basically, like, Ozymand is just making everybody pretty much uniting humanity just by bringing up this potentially greater threat that doesn't exist, but it's like, hey, it worked out for the better. Or worse. Yeah. <laughs> but then but then when you make it like somebody that's already omnipotent and powerful as the threat, it's just kinda not the same. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah. It, like, in, instead of like, hey <laughs> yeah, it's like instead of hey, let's join together and fight this menace, it's like, Oh god, please don't hurt me again. Wait guys, we gotta be good. Right. <laughs> Uh, that, that's always the vibe I've kind of got from him. It's like, don't get your dad mad, or he'll come down there. It's like, oh, okay. Honestly, yeah. And man, I was way too young to watch that movie in theaters. Yeah, with, 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 with the banging. It was just, not just the banging, but just everything. The nihilism, the sex, the literal girl literal girl who died from that killer Rorschach scene, all that stuff. It was like, damn. Yeah. 
It's like, yo, maybe I shouldn't beg my sister to take me to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you at the time? I think I was like either nine or ten, if oh, I remember shit. right. I was just, <laughs> it was like, bro. Yeah, let's see. If you were nine, I was probably like eighteen or something like that, or seventeen, sixteen, I think. Oh, it's been a while goodness. since that came out. Yeah, because another movie came out like two, yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. Let's see, that was three years after high school for me. So, yeah, yeah I would have been like 18, 19 at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's like, right. that shit dropped, that was just... Ugh. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, and, I'll, and also, I guess, one other nitpick I kind of didn't really like is, like, they had... They had the Warshack, like, hack the... Uh, the criminal mm-hmm. with, with with a with a with a hat with like a with a butcher knife instead of hooking him up to a instead of hooking him up to the furnace and uh, having him burn you know, you know burn alive instead yeah it's kind of like huh y'all y'all made that yeah yeah when i discovered that when i finally read the comic and everything i'm like oh so you made this extra edgy on purpose yeah 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 that's how i felt and like and I tried to try tried to talk to people about it. They're like, "No, no, I think it's kind of I think it's kind of cool." I'm like, "Bro, oh, you you don't get what I mean." Like, <laughs> it, it, it don't it, it's so much. There's there's like levels to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> like he he was he was trying to quote unquote give him an option to save himself, but he realistically was not going to save himself at all. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that was like two nitpicks I didn't like about it. Like, but. I never actually went back and watched the newer version of it. I don't know if it's any better or not. All I can say is this. I give it credit because it's not trying to just have another retelling of like the movie. Because that's pretty much just what it is. It's just like, hey, we're just going to do our own thing. Because while also trying to like be faithful to the original source material by, first off, acknowledging the squid and mm-hmm. why people are like this. Yeah. And just, you know, kind of just like, you know, doing the whole thing of just like putting a ban on like, you know, superheroes and all that stuff. Basically just emphasizing, hey, what would the world of Watchmen be like in the future? Yeah. So, you know, pretty much just doing that. So it's like, even if it's not for everybody, I can at least say, hey, at least you followed the source material. I don't know, I don't know what Zack Snyder was doing. Yeah. I don't know what Zack Snyder was doing in the booth that day, but he clearly was just like, hey, yo. You like this joke about like Batman with bat nipples? I'm gonna put that mm-hmm. in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, but how do you how do you feel about like well what if? Hmm. I was trying to think of a good point. Like you know how the Scott Pilgrim movies kind of almost verbatim the movie sometimes, mm-hmm. but like then. It, then, then there are times when they kind of stray away as well. How do you how do you feel about that one? I will say, as much as I like that movie, and I can't say you can yeah. at least watch the movie as its own thing without having to read the yeah. comics. I can't say once you read the comic and everything, you kind of can't help but acknowledge that there's a lot missing because yeah, they're shoving six books into one movie, so it's like. That's going to be hard at the end of the day. And sometimes it works. Some things it doesn't. So it's like, eh, it's, it's kind of just a 50-50. I mean, it's like, I still like it. And I can still keep the original books and all that stuff separately. Because sometimes there were moments where I could say, yeah, sometimes that's just filler. But it's like, you also kind of just miss certain parts where, like, Scott goes through the growth as a character. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, like, pretty much cutting down, like, the, um, Nega Scott fight at the end where he's just fighting himself and everything his evil version of himself to just be like oh yeah you know we just talked it out he's a pretty cool guy and everything it's like you're kind of just missing that key part in his like character that helps him grow as a person so eh it's just what it's kind of just a whatever thing for me but I know that could like bother other people who were like really into that story like watching that stuff from like 2003 and onward 
So mm-hmm. that's just how I feel at the end of the day. I will say they did execute putting six for six issues into a movie way better than some others have done. Like uh, I know, right? A good a good example when you know we're kind of going full circle would be mm-hmm. the Spawn movie where that was like almost <laughs> ten issues, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! I was like, but, mm. Mm-hmm. like the you know the worst part about it is every time I tell people like, "Hey, yo, you know Angela was in that movie," and they're just like, "Wait, she was?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. it's a literal blink if you miss it." It's like there she goes right there in that one little scene, and yeah, now she's gone. She's, <laughs> and, and she's wearing the outfit uh, Astrada wears, like later on in Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. it's like you could tell that's Angela because she's wearing the spawn earrings. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like oh damn, she gonna do anything? No. Oh, actually, didn't didn't she like gunfight Spawn and die? No, that wasn't her. That was the guy that that was the girl that like killed her in the movie. That was that like got killed and everything. Well, the girl that like killed Al in the movie. That was just a whole other character. Angela's just a random throwaway cameo, which I I guess what they were trying to do was set up like a Spawn film series, but they fucked up so bad with the first movie. It's just there's just no point. (laughs) Yeah. funny thing about that movie is uh, uh, we had like an auction here at my town for like a fundraiser and whatnot. We had a bunch of like celebrities like sign like sign a bunch of things and whatnot. Uh, my dad uh, uh, and I, I was there uh, he actually bid upon like a Spawn like t-shirt mm-hmm. signed by Martin Sheen and uh, also it came with a di- the director's cut version of Spawn Signed by Martin Sheen. Whoa. VHS. Nice. I think I got that shirt somewhere. I mean, unfortunately, I was a kid, so I didn't know you. You probably. Sh- I, I would like to wear. I like to wear that shirt, but you know, probably mm. shouldn't throw it through the wash. But uh, I've. Fl- I haven't seen it in a while, but I'm pretty sure it still had a sig on there. Like, it's not completely gone. You know, you can still see Martin Sheen. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> But I think the DVD is still at my dad's house. But yeah, we like we won the director's cut of Spawn, and it's it's definitely a different movie, like a little bit different. Like he's <laughs> a lot more cursing, a lot more CGI, you know. Oh yeah, no, I got that copy myself, so I understand what you mean. Like it, it was so weird. I remember seeing Spawn, like as a kid, not the movie, but like the cover of the DVD, because my mom, God bless her, literally tried pushing me to watch this movie because it's like you know it was because it looked like something that was up my alley it was cool it was edgy and it had a black superhero in it i'm just like yeah that's cool i don't like the cover though (laughs) and because of that one joke that one skit in robot chicken i was like yeah i'm not interested i'm not interested in this character like that (laughs) (laughs) And then I finally watched the movie, and I'm like, "Damn, this is this is corny as hell." I kind of like it though. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I for, I know it's been a while. Um, I always get him mixed up with uh, how do how do how do, what is his name? The the actor who played Spawn. It's oh yeah, it's Michael. Michael Jow- yeah, White. Oh, yeah. Okay. I always get him mixed up with Jaleel White. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah, like, no. wait a minute. No, trust that, that's me, Sonic. I get it. They both got white <laughs> names, so I feel that. <laughs> oh, man, yo. You gotta, you gotta commission that one day. Just be like, yo, Michael Jow White <laughs> and Jaleel White in the same room. It's just a picture of Spawn. <laughs> just a picture of, like, Spawn and Sonic. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh but like he 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 did a ser- he did at least a serviceable job, as well as well as you know can can of course you know not mention John Leguizamo's like show stealing performance as the clown. Why wow, I was so surprised when he did that, or that was yeah. him? Because first off, I didn't know he was that short, and second, he he was surprisingly entertaining. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Despite it all, so I was like, ah, so you guys are going to be like the only two people carrying this movie. Gotcha. At least y'all, at least y'all are the focus. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Martin Sheen, he 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 did a serviceable job, but yeah, like my, Michael J. White and uh, John Leguizamo definitely were the two like big main people who were carrying this movie. Oh uh, yeah, it was. I, I will say, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I oh, know. I was just gonna say, like, the movie was um so weird because one thing that always stood out to me from like what the director said. Mm-hmm. When he had um, when he had one of Spawn's friends, um, Terry Terry Fitzgerald, you know the one that got with his wife and everything mm-hmm. when he passed and all that stuff. He the director said this weird thing when he said why did he make like Terry white, and this is an actual quote by the way. Like yes, you can look oh, this boy. up, everybody. He said with his full yeah. chest, "I didn't want to make it a black movie." <laughs> What? <laughs> he said, "I wanted to make Terry White because I did just want to make it in a, a full-on black movie." And at first, I'm thinking, to, and at like, I'm thinking to myself, "I understand what you're saying, but you could have chose so many different different yeah. ways to word that." <laughs> the whole chef's definitely coming off of that one. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro. Bro, someone got called Dr. Umar Johnson on that one. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bro. But yeah, that's that's basically what happened. Uh what do you think about um since we were talking about uh well uh, sorry, kinda two things at once here. Mm-hmm. Well, not two things, two thoughts at once I'm having here. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say the only reason why I say uh, Michael J. White did a serviceful job as Spawn, mostly just because, even though it was his movie, mm-hmm. it it didn't really feel like it was. You know, I don't feel like I, we had enough time with Spawn. You know what I mean? No, I get what you mean. It unfortunately, the problem with that movie, at least for me, that that I can tell looking back, is that it was mostly us kind of just seeing al from like pretty much like from like the wizard's perspective what's his name's perspective and also we just didn't really get to know much about spawn it's kind of just like all right he he's part of this organization this shady organization he tries to leave he he dies he gets shot and murdered and all that stuff comes back and that's pretty much just what happened and that's it and and I, and this is like hopeful, but you know they they probably didn't plan on it. Maybe fleshing that out in the second movie, but then again, that was Hollywood back then. Uh-huh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. where they're just like, let's see what works, and then we'll go from there. And that's kind of just what 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 the issue was. It's like, like I said, like like you said, just um, they clearly wanted to just do more with this character, but. They, unfortunately, the movie was just not done well enough to do that, and obviously, financially, it did not work out. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, at least we got the series for that one. Yeah, and how do you feel about, uh, how do you feel about Lig- Liguizamo's performance as the clown versus, like, the clown in the series? I think he's, isn't he voiced by, uh, uh, trying to th- I, 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 I just thought of his name, and now I can't think of it. I, uh, no, I feel that. It, was it? Was it Jim Cummings? Mm, I know oh, Jim no. Cummings is in that. He is, but he didn't voice clown. Some guy named um Michael Nicolos Nicolosi. Uh, okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, he was Jim. just um in that. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I think I think uh, if I remember correctly, uh, um, that's right. Uh, he he was like the ice cream man. That that's who uh, Jim Cummings was. Yeah, the evil ice cream man. That's right. Oh yeah, fucking hate that guy. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much him and everything. He um, pretty much I. But like, I guess like I like both, but I guess I like them for like different reasons because it's like clearly both both the show and the movie have like different tones. So it's like mm-hmm. for that movie. I could definitely say, you know, Leguizamo definitely did his thing and all that stuff. Just like, you know, he was going off the rails. He clearly did the assignment well by following the director's orders of just being an over-the-top, kind of annoying, goofy-ass clown. While the other guy for that show, he did the assignment by making, like, clown a very subtle but menacing presence while also being probably one of the best shit-talkers in animation. And, you know, also following the assignment when he just went into his demon form, and he was just uncanny and creepy and very had a dominating presence that's just like, yeah, no, I ain't fucking with that. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah pretty much, I guess I just like them both, just just for different reasons. They just, they just both fit a different vibe for both of those show and movies. So, yeah, they're both pretty good. Ah. Uh, I guess one was just more like comic book. The other was just doing his own thing. And yeah, that's cool. So, and, uh, yeah, you, you do make some great points there. Mm-hmm. It's definitely mm-hmm. about, it's definitely about the way, definitely about the way they are kind of done and the time and fashion that they were made. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially during the time. Oh, yeah. Especially for something like Spawn to drop like that in the 90s. It's like, hey guys, we got a, we got a Spawn animated series coming out. Alright, cool. Is it going to be for kids? No. It's an no. adult show. And it's like, oh, okay. Is it just going to be Spawn kicking ass and all that stuff? I mean, yeah, sometimes. Other times he's just lamenting about like his past sins and traumas and all that stuff. But, you know, he's going to kick ass from time to time. Like, is it going <laughs> to be a happy ending? We'll see. We'll see what the writers feel. <laughs> <laughs> like, I go, I Spawn is like, some like looking back, Spawn is definitely not for the faint of heart. Nothing too extreme, but it can be a lot for some people. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. A lot, lot, of, lot, lot of violence and cursing and blood. And nihilism. Hallelujah, a lot of nihilism. <laughs> Bruh. But don't get it twisted, y'all. Yeah. It's still good. Hmm. Sorry, now, now I'm looking up things about it. Yeah. Because, like, may- maybe maybe he's not in the Spawn series. Goddamn. Wait, who? Uh, Jim Cummings. Uh, no, I don't think he is. I think it might have been somebody else. Dang. But he, it would, I don't know, it just, some people would, can do the voices, like, wow. Right. Yeah, they, they got a lot of unique actors for, like, this movie, where pretty much the only, like, mainstream Ron, one here is just Keith David. Yeah, Ron Cox, he did Billy Kincaid. Yep. Oh, uh, okay. Weird. Right. <laughs> then, then again, uh, go go ahead. I was saying, like, meanwhile, the live action movie. Hey, look, they got the voice of Fred, Frank Walker. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, but but then I get you know Michael J. White then would go on. He 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 would become you know Black Dynamite. Oh yeah. So he definitely. <laughs> He, def- he definitely did good coming back with that. <laughs> he was also he was also in the Dark Knight. He he was like the he he was the ga- gangster that I think gets that pencil in his forehead during the Joker interrogation thing. Oh, you want to know something? It wasn't him, but he got like his oh. face slit by the Joker. Got his throat slit by the Joker and everything. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was him. That was one of the two movies that I first saw him in. That and Why Did I Get Married by Tyler Perry. That is 
a total <laughs> contrast. That is a total contrast to the movies I see him in, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so do you think we'll ever get that uh, new spy movie? I don't know. Every time Todd McFarlane says like, "Hey yo, here's an update," and it's just, it's it's definitely an update. It's it's definitely yeah. him talking about the movie. There's no release date or trailer, but he's talking about it. <laughs> I'm starting to think if he doesn't do anything soon, hell. They're, they're gonna need a new lead actor because Jamie Fox is he's getting out there I mean I will say though he he, he looked fine in elect he did look fine as Electro so that may be a little too that may be too too forward to say but I mean if they don't get on it soon he's gonna be real old I mean honestly man I mean honestly like no kid the release date we're, we're way past the release date when they first said this movie was gonna drop this is supposed to drop in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2023 See, bro <laughs> bro he, he yeah he's like 55 right now yeah Jamie Fox is. yeah if we push it back any farther he's gonna be 60 honestly but like i said he he looked good he 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 did good as electro in the in the in that spider-man movie so oh, yeah. who knows who, who knows what they got in the Oh yeah, no, I agree. Like, I listen. Jamie Foxx, he's still cool. He still, he still kicks ass and all that stuff. I literally saw him in that um Netflix movie Daybreak and everything when I was um chilling with the fam. When I was chilling with my family and everything in New York. Oh yeah, that's got Snoop Dogg in it, right? Oh yeah, it. That's a fun movie. Like, no, I'm gonna tell you off the jump. Watch that movie. It's a good time. It is a good action comedy thriller horror type of movie. So. It, it looked kind of good, actually. Like I, I did kind of want to check it out. I heard, I heard mixed things about it, and also I don't have Netflix, oh. <laughs> so I would have to find a way of watching it. Eventually, I'll get Netflix. Oh yeah, no, I but, got I, you. but I'm also looking. He did this thing called like Project Power. Oh yeah, I watched that movie. It's got like uh, don't know who the girl is, but that's. Gordon Levitt as the second lead. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Project Power. I won't lie, it's a, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good movie. It's definitely, definitely one of Jamie Foxx's more serious roles. Mm. I kind of don't remember much about it after rewatching, which could be a bad thing, but. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. Would feel, I think I remember more what happened in tape in tape break than that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just Jamie Foxx kind of just like, uh, oh hey, you know, I'm just a pool cleaner, and then it turns out his clients is actually a vampire, so he has to kill them and collect their teeth for money. <laughs> yeah, which is cool because I like uh, I, I do like vampire movies and vampire hunter movies are also good too. Oh yeah. So, so, like, them doing, like, a, uh, d doing, like, a, uh, a, well, a vampire movie now nowadays with, with Hunters. Oh, yeah. With a bigger cast is oh, always kind of, it's always welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and now I'm seeing, like, uh, I'm seeing him, I'm seeing Snoop Dogg as a cowboy, and that, that, that is kind of awesome. Oh, yeah, no, Snoop Dogg, when he's on screen, he just steals every scene he's in. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out because I do like I do like vampire movies. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Right. But yeah, like so, uh, TLDR. Um. Yeah, spawn. Yeah, spawn. Spawn. Good character. Still waiting on that movie. God knows when it's coming out, though. But as you were, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think we might be almost reaching the end. Uh, how how long have we been going? Pretty much just good. Pretty much just a good uh, hour and a half here. Okay, yeah. I think we, we could probably find a good stopping point here. Um, hmm. Trying to think. Is there any other indie books we want to talk about before we go? Hmm. I can't. I can't think of any off the top of my head. 
Because huh? we did name a, we named a lot of good ones and we named a lot of questionable ones. Yeah, that's what we'll call it questionable. Yeah, yeah. but um, I, I guess. I, I, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say um, pretty much the last one I guess I could recommend is just a French comic um, Last Man, not the um Why Last Man, but like um this French comic yeah. called Last Man that um had a prequel animated series on verve which was the only reason why i bought that app because listen when i watched last man i was like holy shit this is really good this is a really good french cartoon <laughs> series and this was crowdfunded by the way so it was like holy shit the fact that they were able to get this much animation from crowdfunding it oh yeah so i was like i watched that series and then i read the comic which it's it's still really good even compared to the series but like just know um the animated series takes place before the comic so mm -hmm. definitely watch that if you ever want more context for the comic you don't automatically need it but i'm just saying i heavily recommend the show it is everything it is like a great action cartoon it is a great french cartoon it is just it has everything you need it's just it's got that neon flair that you ever wanted out of like a action cartoon so by all means, well, isn't it did it have like a fist of north style esque as well yeah pretty much like a fist of the north star s style or just like o yeah. old school anime style that i think if you love old school anime mm -hmm. it's it definitely hits like the right notes for a lot of people especially if you grew up with shows like um if you watch animes like City Hunter, Gunsmith Cats, Lupin the Third, all that good stuff. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that bill well. Before we go, I don't remember. Uh, did we talk about Ball Masters? Oh shit! No, we did. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, we, we all right. Because I'm looking at, I looked at the like the person at the back, and I'm like, it kind of reminds me of Ball Masters. Like, oh, we never talked about that. I know. Right? <laughs> all right, so Ball Masters XXX. Ballmasters is great. It is beautiful. Please, everybody, yeah. watch it on HBO Max. Watch the new yeah, special that, that dropped. That 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 special was pretty fucking good. Like, uh, right? Uh, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, they were able to get like a budget for an actual like anime, right? <laughs> Almost. It, I, and I like and I liked where they kind of went with it as well. Kind of kind of showing like oh yeah that guy had all, all the omnipotent power no no he was just a kid he, he's basically like he's basically like one of the people there just kind of went off and did his own thing and now and now he's getting punished <laughs> it's like it's like guys what it's like guys i lost all my power and it's like the the series itself is always kind of weird because it's like it's literally both being a parody while paying tribute to a lot of old school and new school anime from like all different genres like as a guy who like is getting into kaniku man now i see a lot of these background characters i'm like oh shit some of y'all are like actual kaniku man references it's not yeah. just like a typical dragon ball naruto all this sailor moon stuff it's like oh they go through everything even the uh. new special now like with rubicon and everything is like even now they're kind of just parodying a lot of like um old school like um sci-fi anime now so just y'all gotta watch it y'all seriously gotta oh. watch this it's like it's too late for okko OK sadly but guys watch ball masters it's good and i think i remember you said this is possibly kind of a uh how they're going to continue the series on it's just like doing like specials right yeah pretty much just taking like um that's pretty much just what a lot of these shows are doing now where it's just like we got canceled but they're pretty much just making it up with these like specials to give us a little, you know, just a little something nice to send off on. Yeah, I did not expect to see the them doing the battle, battle for the planet. Um, uh, when, whenever, whenever at the end where they finally unlock the final power, where, where they unlock the upgrade, right? Like that, like that character design is. R really reminds me of Battle of the Planet. You know the gu guys with the like the hoods and the bird capes and whatnot. Oh yeah, gotcha. That, that old man. school anime. Oh yeah, gotcha man. Yeah, yeah. You know we're supposed I to get a movie. 
<laughs> really? They were supposed to get like an anime movie, so like you remember that Astro Boy movie and everything. Yeah, yeah, so, that was that H- Amaji. I yeah, that. yeah. Uh, so Amaji was basically trying to do this thing where they're like, "Hey, we want to revive a lot, and I mean a lot of old school anime, and bring it to the West. Basically, try to make those animes like mainstream again." Un- I remember they had like an Avengers thing. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, because I basically just wanted to do that. It was like, all right, we got Astro Boy. Because they had, like, trailers and all that stuff ready to go. But they just never got picked up. They had one for Astro... You know, they had Astro Boy, obviously. They had a Gotcha Man. They even had one for Gigantor. Like, That's right. I forgot about the guy. Gigantor. Didn't they also have Tekaman Blade? Yes. Or Tekaman? Yeah, they had Tekaman, but that, was, that didn't go through, like, the trailer stage. That was just, like, a concept mm-hmm. and everything they had. Like, they literally were pushing for Gotcha Man to be the next best thing. And it's like, oh, man, that's crazy. Astro Boy didn't make money, so we got to shut y'all down real yeah. quick. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we gave you a chance after Turtles. And we gave you another chance after... At, we, we gave you a chance with this Astro Boy thing. No, we're not doing this. Bro, they even, they even wanted to make a whole fucking... <laughs> they wanted to make a Legend of Zelda series. Yeah. Nah, that ain't happening either, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> no, no. Man. man. That's why we can't have nice things, man. Not in this lifetime. Nope. God. Alright, right, well, I think this is probably a good stopping point. Um, and anything you wanna... Anything you want to promote while you're here, so... Well, as of right now, I don't have much to promote, but I am working on a couple of scripts, and I will say this. I mentioned one of them with Last Man, Mm -hmm. but until then, I got a couple more on the sidelines, such as Primal by Genny Tartakovsky. Of course, of course, the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And ironically enough, (laughs) I'm talking about the PJs, and I'm going to have a special guest on there for that one. (laughs) Uh, I would, I would. Uh, I, I, I used to watch the PJs. Well, now I no, got two. Okay, if I say, man. I, I, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I, I will show up. <laughs> PJ. <laughs> Dude, I used to watch that, and then whenever it stopped being on air, airing on Fox, and they went over to UPN, I kind of lost track, and then I found it, and I was like, oh, wait, why, 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 why do they have a, like a why, why is there this little girl here now? I, I don't understand what's going on. That was such a... I remember I was watching that. I was like, huh. You are an oddly appealing character for these contrasts and all these other characters. But okay. Yeah. You're, you're, part, you're part of the crew now. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to watch PJs. I, I would... If you give me a heads up, I would definitely, like, binge watch the shit out of that. And be like, oh, okay. I will let you know you could pretty much watch it anywhere now it's on peacock it's on youtube it's on hulu oh. it's on nice Tubi, because it's got everything on Tubi. there so yeah <laughs> word that sounds good oh uh, yeah all right well i i look forward to both those projects um other than that i think that this will be it um our next guest will be dappers Ah uh, yes, Dapper's Pad, my fellow Hotep. Yes, he, he he will be the second member of the Hotep Rangers that are that'll be on this uh, on this pod. Nice. We're gonna go through all th- all three of them and another guest in between. And then I'm gonna invade the I'm gonna invade the the Hotep at, at that point. Almost definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a- 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 after we unlock the final gem, the the Vin Rocco gem, exactly the, the power. After I, after I get the final power coin of the Hotep, right. I'll invade. The, I'll invade their world. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I might want to get that commission. Like me, me have like co- throw, throwing up some power coins. <laughs> it's the and it, 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 it's it, it's your guys is like power coins. <laughs> I think it's the flood. Actually, let's see. Sound like Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls. Finally, I have them all. 
<laughs> yeah, because let's see, I have, I, I got you already on the pod. Mm-hmm. We, we had Mephi about to have dappers when he then, mm-hmm. and that, that's it. Or is there one more person? No, that's everybody. Yeah, yeah. Then, then after Vin, then I'll, then I'll invade the other pod. Oh hell yeah! Uh, all hell's gonna break loose. I'm gonna bring out the baseball bat. For the horny for for the horny jail, <laughs> and, then, and and then then we'll vibe probably. All right, as usual. Maybe go. eat a pizza. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll be but good. other than that, but other than that, I hope you guys hope you guys have a lovely evening. And once again, my name is Nook, and I'm the bear. And please like, sub, subscribe, comment, all all that things that YouTube or Spotify likes us likes us to advertise. Share with your friends. Mm-hmm. Now that's mostly what we're asking. Share with your friends. And have a good day. Peace out. Peace out.